gentlemen, March 2022 marks the 10th year memorial of Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Dave Lang up in heaven, he's looking down mm-hmm. <laughs> alongside Street Fighter Cross. He is not dead, soul. but it's one of my favorite. I miss yeah, his soul, rest too. In, rest in peace. Rest in, rest in power, Dave Lang. <laughs> that is such a dumb FGC joke. No one will ever understand. Hopefully not not take out of context. I don't but. know where the heck that started, that like how Dave has passed D- away or something. D- Devolver, <laughs> Devolver Digital. Devolver when, did they, okay. when they did one of their E3 presentations, they said coming live from the Dave Lang Memorial Auditorium. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> you know what? D- Dave you gotta, Lang you gotta, is you gotta add that bit. because he like is responsible is. for a billion Capcom like re-releases that were amazing and Killer Instinct in some way. <laughs> Yeah, yep. so that's why oh, it's man. so good. Everyone's like, "Oh, he died, right?" He's like, "No, I'm not dead. It's no Mandela." Effect <laughs> it's like here. literally right there. I'm not dead. <laughs> that's the power of the internet, man. That's the power of the internet. Uh, Max, you did a video recently about like the dark age of Capcom. Uh, I did not click it because I knew we were going to talk about this, but from a competitive uh, FGC angle, both of you. I, I just know it from a very casual perspective and what like people around, I was still doing game testing around this time and during lunch break, Street Fighter Cross Tekken had just, just come out and I knew it from a casual perspective what people thought, but I actually don't know what anybody close to the tourney scene thought about this, like going forward, its initial um, like reveal and stuff because it had that really early trailer from like San Diego Comic-Con yeah, where that hype trailer. it was all this... That that yeah. trailer that got everyone like crazy, but then but then the game came out. So I, I I throw the floor open to either of you. Just just tell me what your entire thought process was when Street Fighter Cross Second was launched versus when it died. I'll leave it to Justin uh, because I think yeah. Justin was a bit more connected to what was happening like tournament wise at the time. So I love Street Fighter Cross Tekken. It was actually one of my favorite tournament games, but it was also a very bad game, especially the first patch. Yeah. The first patch was jab, 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 time over. Literally everyone, for some reason, was just completely just stand jab all day with Ryu and Relento, and you were just stuck in this block stun for like 10 seconds, at least 10 game <laughs> seconds, where you couldn't do a damn thing. So that was the meta of the game for at least the first year. So pretty terrible, right, for the first first start. And jumping Tatsus <laughs> were crazy. Like you could, you could get like I remember like escaping everything and jumping Tatsu's having an insane. Ken, you would just do jump Tatsu, and that was that was his neutral. You know the helicopter just go all the way to the other side of the screen, everything. Um, then they have um, paid DLC gems, right? Then they have like those like gems that you paid for uh, for like casual players. There was like the base amount of gems that the game came with. Then there were retailer exclusive gems. Like you want the Best Buy gems. You want the PlayStation. <laughs> Best Buy. Yeah. Uh, shh, shh. You want the PlayStation <laughs> Home gems, bro. The the PS Home gems, they will give you a leg up. You'll be winning tournaments with these gems. And that like brought me back. I was just like, what is PlayStation Home? Oh, right. That thing. I got a goofy behind the scenes story about the gem thing because I was, I was talking to the Capcom guys a lot. This was like right after Ultimate Marvel 3. And I was talking to them a lot around this time frame before Street Fighter Cross Second was coming out because there was just a ballistic amount of Capcom fighting games that they were dropping it around this time frame. And I remember him telling me about the gems thing and I'm trying to wrap my head around it. And he didn't get into specifics like auto tech throws gem and you know, things yep. like that. It was for me, it seemed like the stuff I had already seen in the game, which was uh, like meter you know, or slight speed increase or, you know, a little bit more damage and it activates based on every once in a while sort of situations. But like, yeah, the, the crazy amount of stuff that it could do for you, like in some of the ones that were exclusive and cost actual money were really good. Like, you could never be thrown type of shit. Um, and he rem- I remember him explaining this to me and he's like, this is going to make or break this game. Like we we need to I need we need to find a way to like monetize the game more because it was like a, apparently a thing that they just had super to do exp- like around the time super expensive they just had to do it and he's like it's gonna make or break of the game what do you think about it and I'm like I definitely agree it's going to make or break the game <laughs> it's either going to go well and people will adopt it or people will really not adopt it 
one of the things I, it might be the same person that we talked to, but they, they were saying to me that at Capcom Japan, their plan was that gems were going to just keep going and yeah. going and going for literal years versus the reality, which was for months it lasted, where they yeah. just stopped selling gems and they were going to have like premium gems that would just make you do crazy things like you're, you're, you're suggesting. And, the whole point was because the game was just getting more and more expensive. And that's why Capcom had to seek all these outside partnerships like Best Buy having gems, yeah. like there being a bunch of PlayStation characters. And yeah. for, of course, the thing that maybe not broke the camel's back, but certainly like punched the camel a little bit, which was um, the Vita port which Sony used as like a bargaining chip. Like you have to advertise the crap out of the Vita version. Yeah. And all of the game's DLC originally was going to be like exclusive to the Vita for like three to six months. Capcom and Sony have always had these like this weird relationship, right? Like ever since this yeah. time frame where there'd be like Vita ports of Marvel 3 and Cr Cross Tekken, this was like the, the, the really hard fighting game beginnings, which would lead to Street Fighter V where Capcom and Sony were like now in bed together. And yeah. that continues almost to this day. So they, they really wanted like other uh, partnering opportunities for this because I remember at the same time, uh, Capcom was getting chummy with Microsoft for Resident Evil exclusive little things like Operation Raccoon City got like exclusive little bits of DLC and modes and yeah. stuff. There's some sort of uh, Nemesis. I couldn't even tell you anything about Operation Raccoon City. So I guess that's a good that's a good point to like start off is like the what was the missteps like of Street Fighter Cross Second? What because a lot of people look back ten years from now and they might not have even have tried this game, which sold like nearly two million units, and they're just like, huh, you know, like the the big things like Justin is saying competitively. It was kind of weird at the start competitively with a lot of gameplay mechanics, and then as as you remember, Matt, like the gems and the release window and like all the time of it just felt off like in in several in several ways when it first came out yeah like uh, the only thing i can say about release timing is that it was right in the like street fighter 4 arcade edition i think on console had just come out yeah. or a few months prior yeah uh yeah, marvel uh marvel 3 was already like was out had been out for a few months so here's another two tag months. game two months shut up two months uh, uh street fighter cross second came out mid-february uh, Ultimate Marvel Three was uh, around. It came mid, on my birthday, uh, mid, mid, mid November. <laughs> yeah, it came on my birthday. Actually, that's why you love the game so much. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. It, another another funny tidbit because I worked on this little show called <laughs> Cross Assault, and let's not talk Ooh. about that very much. But I remember talking to to Seth Killian, and this is when I was like fairly new to like the behind the scenes of Capcom. Um, after like Ultimate Marvel Three and working on uh, Assist Me for that show, like, the official one. And I remember talking to Seth and he's like, you know what? Every once in a while, like one of these Capcom fighting games is going to be uh, is going to be a snoozer. Like one one's just not going to hit. And we've like we've had a couple of hits, you know, so he's like Street Fighter 4 and Ultimate Marvel 3. He's like, and I, I remember getting the inkling. He did not want to say because it, it was pre-release of the game to like somebody <laughs> in the community. He's like, I don't know about this one. <laughs> like he's like, I don't. I definitely was getting like, hmm, really? That's interesting. OK, <laughs> you know. It, it's so sad because like when you look at like the at least when Street Fighter Cross Tekken the Tekken characters oh, I felt like they badass. were just so amazing yeah. they were so amazing Jesus, right like the dude. Capcom's versions of how to how these Tekken characters would play in a in a Street Fighter environment it worked amazingly yeah. like they did all the combos they got a lot of the moves that really resembled those characters and I really thought they they killed it with that one, right? For sure, they killed it. Did you have like a team that you gravitated toward? Like, what what were your favorite characters in it? So I would say I pl obviously w this is during the Street Fighter Four day, so I played Rufus. So Rufus was in there, so I played Rufus. Um, then I played uh, Horang as well too. Horang was like a really sick character. I really liked playing. Uh, Alyssa was so sick. The fact that she could go into like stance mode of like the chainsaws and non chainsaw. She took her head off as a fireball, like you know, threw her arms across the screen, like. Jack was also really cool. Law was obviously one of everybody's personal favorite. He was like the Shoto of the Tekken side. Yeah, right? yeah. A lot of people played Law. Law. The only the only uh, Tekken character I was like, man, I would have like 
because they they had changed Jin so fundamentally in earlier Tekken games, and I was really excited to see what Jin would be in a like you know in this sort of environment. And he's he was kind of like an odd duck. He's weird. I was like, well, the, he he's interesting, but at the same time, it's like, eh. I was kind of hoping for a Shoto essentially, and it was not quite there. Yeah, it, it's yeah. A, it's an interesting take on like the the Mishimas have all that crazy like electric uppercut kind of stuff that that makes them in Tekken. They kept a lot of the traits that make you know Mishima Mishimas in some ways and even even the other Tekken characters like really keeping the things that you remember about them tried and true so you gotta I give Capcom a huge amount of credit for those characters and I think it's one of the saddest things is that like the Tekken side of the roster was all almost completely well they were completely new and they're actually a lot of really cool character designs and really dope characters that feel like they're just in a weird game that can be kind of confusing at times I mm. loved uh, Jin and Yoshimitsu. Yoshimitsu is a weird ass character too, and Jin was yeah. arguably weird as well. But man, the the amount of you could do some crazy finesse stuff with Jin. I'm pretty sure Justin ran into this with like Flo and stuff like that. You could do some really cool stuff with Jin. Yeah, Flo was like that premier Jin player uh, during a time, and he would find all the broken stuff. Like it's literally like Capcom just took like all these broken little like mechanics from different characters and just gave it to Jin. Right? They got he gave him like a little sidestep punch thing that's like completely invincible. Got these little fireball orbs that comes out of nowhere. So Jin, they really made, took Jin and just changed them completely different compared to Tekken. While Kazuya, what you were saying with the like the whole electric, the electro wing godfist, they gave him that one, right? Everyone knows of Kazuya as like that Doria, like yeah. with, with the whole launcher thing. And that's pretty much how you play him. You just spam that move out, just like how you would do in Tekken. And it, it, I Capcom really did knock out of the park with that one. And it's, it's unfortunate that people don't see how how good Capcom did with the Tekken characters. Like, because it was a tall order in the middle of making all these other fighting games. Like, uh, Street Fighter 4 is still going strong. And they and the amount, when you add in all the characters, isn't it like 49 characters? It's a ton. Or it's, it's like yeah, 40 it's something, right? Yeah, like, no, off it's the a, bat. And so it, the, the funniest thing about Street Fighter Cross Tekken is that it was the last time... Um, now that Street Fighter 6 exists, potentially, it was the last time Capcom actually spent a lot of budget on a fighting game, right? This was the last game that had a huge amount of promotional marketing. It had, like, licensed music. It had a ton of CG cutscenes. It had fully CG endings for the majority of characters in its game. Like, there was a whole, like, unique team things. Like, there was so much, like, love and care put into all the presentation elements of Street Fighter yeah. Cross Tekken, which is really sad because it... It to me, it's like this is so neat. This game is so content rich. You could like do two v two and all this crazy stuff, like like the Evo two v two thing that started with Street Fighter Cross Tekken. With like you can actually have four people playing the game at once, and then the PlayStation version had like the scramble mode where you can have four characters oh, on. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. Yeah, that's cool. Like this stuff is uh, it barely functions. By the way, like the PS3 version <laughs> is like oh, 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 I just get the round over. It's oh, coughing. Ah. It's like it's having such a tough time just getting it to run at like fifty FPS. But it's 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 super sick the problem is is that like the overall like art style and presentation of the game to me is gross like something about yeah. the way like looks and feels and like the the overall like it feels like any of the 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 chains or like the the, the shackles that were on street fighter 4 is like you know art style like the ono influence or something is just completely yep. unchained and it's like ready to go <laughs> in all single fashion with the stages and characters in, in street fighter cross second there's this weird like I, when I think about the game, I think of orange. There's this orange yeah. tint to a lot of the presentation. I guess that's because the fire cross or, or you know, uh, something in the logo. But it permeates, like, a lot of it. And it's a lot of the stages have, like, when I think about the stages across Tekken, they stick out like a sore thumb in Ultra Street Fighter 4. It's like they're so crazy and over the top with the amount of animation and characters doing things and everything, yeah. like the dinosaurs and the that <laughs> one stage where you're driving away from, what are you driving? You're in, like, the back of a hover tank, and it's going oh, on. I, I know what you're talking about. In, like, Antarctica yeah, yeah, yeah. or and, something. And, 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 a, and a mammoth is chasing a you mammoth, the back. A Pandora a mammoth. mammoth, no less. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like Pandora mammoth. <laughs> but, but that's also, well, Max is right, that like it has this weird art style that may have turned people off. Like It also has this unique 
sort of chaotic energy to the whole oh, thing yeah. because yeah. unlike a lot of you know versus crossover games we've seen before it's like oh there's a tournament going on i don't know they at least try to hold everything together like oh there's this crazy uh mcguffin in the antarctic and everyone's trying to get in but it at least holds the story together and max mentioned those trailers like weren't there like these CG webisodes that they would that Capcom would show every couple of weeks, where it was like three or four minutes of animation just tying story together. And like I was looking it up to as a bit of research, there's something like 32 minutes of CGI animation for a fighting game. Oh, that wow. is ludicrously expensive because unlike um uh a a Nether Realm game, that's usually all done in engine, no. or they just like record a movie of that yeah. stuff and when the gameplay is required it you know moves into the engine proper but this is like really expensive and it was again it was polygon pictures that did all that cg yeah, stuff it was not yeah? a cheap studio yeah <laughs> this, this this studio was expensive this well funny enough here's like the weird story like yeah polygon pictures or polygon studios was like a, a trailer house right that made a bunch of cg cutscenes for games and they had already done a bunch of stuff for street fighter 4 and ultimate marvel 3 and they did all those crazy ass cutscenes and and trailers for Street Fighter Cross Tekken. This this is the stuff that you might remember with like Rufus versus Bob and then and yep, in, in the back you had like um Cody and Guy f squaring up against like Hugo and somebody else. like there was all that those cool poison cutscenes and stuff like that. That's all from this game. Um but that relationship would keep going because Polygon Pictures, as as Matt has learned over the years, and as we've heard for many years, and at least it's out there now, would go on to be like the developer for Street Fighter V early Ooh. on, the, the first version of Street Fighter V that we've actually seen in some screenshot form that looks really weird and is a very yeah. different game than the one that eventually came out. So th that's weird that like a, a, a CGI studio house would... some would somehow be at the reins of development. It wasn't, I was never clear whether it was more from a visual standpoint, like they were sussing out what the game would look like visually. And once that was hammered home, <laughs> Capcom would then take over the reins. Cause I, I never, when I was looking into them, at least I didn't see any like actual game development credits. So the only thing I can add to that is that uh -huh. I'm pretty, I didn't play it much less or ever see it. The only thing I've ever seen of it is those screenshots. However, from the same people that I remember hearing conversations of like 10 years ago, luckily this is like a 10 year anniversary. So it's like, oh, whatever NDAs might have existed should be good now. <laughs> they should be dead. Um, should be, hopefully. I remember <laughs> hearing from like several Capcom people about Street Fighter V around that Street Fighter Cross second time frame about this game that was in development that was supposedly a new Street Fighter that everyone called Jank Fighter. And the <laughs> early impression was that whatever it was 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 not good. This is a crunchy ass, janky fighting game. So to me, it, it really seemed like the they got pretty far uh, in, in actual development. And from what I understood later on, like much later when I heard like, wait, wait, like Polygon Pictures was making a fighting game for Capcom? Aren't they like a trailer house? And it's like, yeah, they are. That's why it's really weird that they were suddenly the developers on like, you know, like Dimps was for Street Fighter 4, for Street Fighter Cross Tekken like the developer for a new game. Like somebody must have been friends with somebody uh, between Polygon Pictures and Capcom where they got enough goodwill to make a whole game. And, uh, and apparently it was played to the point where like potentially even folks at Capcom USA had played this thing and been like, it's jank as hell. Mm. It's probably, oh, I, no. wanna, I wanna play it. I mean, we we uh, like uh, we all want to play the fighting games that never actually got released or we never got to go hands on before before yeah. they. So. Uh, the this this game had the first initial trailer that the, they had at um, uh, San Diego Comic Con, right? And I'm not sure if this was the first time it was playable, but like back in 2011, May of 2011, I got invited to uh, that Captivate event that happened in Miami, and this was, as far as I knew at the time, the first time the press was allowed to go hands on with Cross Tekken, and it was the first time I got to see it. And, you know, a lot of Capcom USA guys there, Ono was there. And there was a presentation right before everyone were, were allowed into the big main hall that had all these setups, like um, Resident Evil Mercenaries was over there, Operation Raccoon City was over there, being played by no one. Um, <laughs> and there was a presentation Ono had about 
fighting games in general. Like, here's what we're doing going forward. Oh, there's also going to be arcade edition for the consoles. And that release date is going to be July 13th or, or whatever it was. Like summer. Summer. And a Capcom USA guy, like, rushes out of the room. Uh, I forget I forget who, who it was at the time. And the presentation finishes up, like, maybe three minutes after that. And I go out. And one of, that Capcom USA guy is talking to uh, Christian Svensson saying, uh, Ono just told them the release date of Arcade Edition. And he goes, that fucking tool. <laughs> Sure. You know, it, it, it's crazy because that it makes perfect sense because I remember that Evo in 2011 where, okay, here here's Arcade Edition. You have one month to get good at this game and then Evo happens. I remember so that. So obviously everybody in Japan already had Arcade Edition for like a whole like yeah. six months, right? And even like, you not know, Daigo timing. switched to, to Yun and y- Yun and saying like Yun and Yang are like the best two characters in the game, right? the beginning of the game so we had no chance to play arcade edition unless we went to like a round one arcade or any arcade that imported like the street fighter 4 from japan so yeah we only had one month to play during that time for, before evo because i remember there being a brouhaha about that like it was just it was people going what like it's how is that even going to be in competition because it it's wait a, a month is the minimum right before something can get added to evo typically uh, isn't it too much? That is, a, that is a, there is no yeah. specific. I don't know. <laughs> that it is. There is. Okay. So you would like to think that, yeah, a game needs to be at least three months in the community for us to have properly established ourselves in the competitive guidelines. Uh, no, there's uh, no like official. These are just yeah, dudes yeah. doing stuff sometimes, man. Because didn't they say one year it's like, oh, Skull Skullgirls is too new. You yes, can't add it. So that that excuse yeah. has been used at several yeah. points before for several fighting games. <laughs> And then not apply to other things later on because mm-hmm, the people mm-hmm. the people running the event might like like the other one, right? Okay, uh, but th- all this to say is that like at the time it like it really seemed like oh no is just I w- if it comes to fighting games I can do whatever I want announce whatever I want I don't care what the marketing teams care about I have something to add to this too and it's, I know you it's, do it's, it's it's a more recent story uh, okay. that wasn't even that long ago in the same like unhinged ono this and uh, I was at a Comic Con it was for I think it was Resident Evil two remake and they would have an update for fighting games after right so the re2 crew comes out the fighting game crew comes out there's a bunch of people on there that i've known on that have been working at capcom for like seven or eight years right and having to deal with all the crazy crap that's over gone over the past many years so uh ono starts talking about fighting games and he's at comic-con right so he starts talking about other stuff and he has a translator there after after the Street Fighter Five part is done, he just starts talking about stuff, and I I remember specifically hearing, uh, in 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 a conversation in Japanese, Dark Stalkers, and I was like, <laughs> Dark Stalkers, and then I'm looking, I'm looking like my, I'm looking at the translator. <laughs> the translator has got like this this, this bead of sweat, <laughs> the sweat, this big the anime, anime sweat, the I'm, anime I'm sweat coming. Who knew exactly what he just said? That has been dealing with this shit for so many years, and he's just like, please, dear God, shut up. Oh my God, please don't say anything. He's like this. Just stone cold face. I don't know what you're talking about. Com- like, and the guy translates what he says, and he's like, "Please don't translate it." And he has to translate what he says. And Ono says something along the lines of, "I didn't forget about that Comic Con where we showed Darkstalkers. Don't worry, I owe it to you guys. Uh, I'm working on like Darkstalkers or something like that." And I'm looking at my friend, and he didn't blink for what felt like four minutes. He was like. I want to die. I've never seen a person <laughs> want to die so hard on the inside. I felt so bad for him. And yeah, this is once again, like one of these situations, Ono just being Ono and just saying stuff and whether or not it's going to happen or come true, nobody knows. Because of course, if he, if he just like glossed over that translation, everyone in that room heard it's dark stalkers is not a word is not a name. You can easily is, yeah. just go. Yeah. Wait. I remember uh, me and Simmons were there. We were like, <laughs> like, look, like, what the hell is he saying? <laughs> uh, 
Um, so at, at the um, at that Captivate event, it was the first time I'd ever obviously played it. And this is when not even every mechanic was in there. As we all know, Street Fighter Cross Deckon doesn't have a lot of new mechanics at all. It's very dry, very basic game. Oh, that's, that's with good humor not, there, Matthew. That's, it's an attempt at it. <laughs> um, it. It has so many things going on. But then it was like, it just had the basic tag in, tag out. I think yeah. it had the two characters teaming up to perform like the big super. But aside from that, like gems were not in it, if I recall, um, because I don't remember thinking about them at all. It wasn't un only until later. But I remember playing it. I remember talking to a few people, like I think some Giant Bomb guys were there as well. And everyone's like, yeah, it's really cool. Like I wasn't sure how this was going to work. So at that time, it was like this is turning out to to work really well and like you know uh, times are going to be great going ahead for these uh all of capcom's fighting games so when you reminded me that this came out two months a tag game you know there's all you can obviously play it like maybe without tag stuff as much but um a tag game coming out two months after another tag game is insane to me. Yeah. I thought they were like six months apart or something. So and here's here's the even crazier part. This is like their big AAA fighting game, right? One yeah. of the big AAA titles. So technically, you can even say Street Fighter Four Arcade Edition was a AAA like big expansion. These are large games. Yeah, but it doesn't help the fact that other games were recently coming out around this same time frame too. So Street Fighter Three Online Edition was. Uh, just come out recently too. I can't remember. It might have been around September 2011. It was like summer 2011, I think. Yeah. So there was already like more expansions and more fighting games. Actually, I'm pretty sure it was because I played Third Strike Online Edition right next to Street Fighter Cross Second at that E3. So mm. within like a year's time frame, this is like one, this is from February 2011 to February 2012. Um, Ultimate Marvel 3 comes out vanilla. Uh, Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition comes out. Street Fighter 3 Third Strike Online Edition comes out. Ultimate Marvel 3 comes out. And Street Fighter Cross Second comes out. There's five fighting games that is launched within a one-year time frame. Damn, and that's that not even a lot. And after that, there's more. Because technically, Marvel vs. Capcom Origins and Darkstalkers Resurrection is like right around the corner. And all yeah. those games died. Because the, the market was... They, they essentially killed themselves, right? Every game was just eating themselves alive. Yeah, because, you know... I'm, I'm assuming this is part oh no part part somebody else but it's like oh remember in the 90s when we had like five fighting games a year like let's bring that back now the only problem with that is that those games were minuscule budget and team wise in the 90s compared to oh I don't know 2011 yeah and even if you're farming them out to Iron Galaxy like that's still you're still fracturing your fan base because the the fan base for fighting games is like much smaller in 2011 than it was in the heyday of like 94 or you know what what have you and it's just i remember at the time going whoa whoa everyone slow down with the fighting games well, because capcom you're not the only game in town there's still nether realm there's still namco there's yeah. there's arxis yep. that that are all coming up i'd say the community and the, the 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 scale at large was definitely worth it's definitely much bigger around that time frame the difference is like what constitutes success yeah. and if you were to release like I don't know, back in the mid 90s in one year, like some weird game like a Darkstalkers Revenge or Ar Arm, not Armored Core, um, Cyberbots, you know, some of these like weird, crazy arcade fighting game, like haphazard releases. Those, yeah, number one, like you said, they're, they're not very big budget games. They're not huge games with huge development windows. They were probably made in like about like a year to maybe a year and a half time frame. Um, but they were arcade games. So if they pushed like, 2,000 to 5,000 units, that was successful, you know? Yeah. If they actually pushed, yeah, that like, th that many arcade machines. And yeah, Darkstalkers 1 pushed, like, I, I think a lot of machines, like 20,000 units of arcade units for our Darkstalkers 1, but the, the ones that came after did not. Like, the game fell off super hard, like, super fast. So, what was essentially successful before was just based on, like, a scalability, right? Games were smaller. The, the the audience feels like it was bigger, but there's way there was I think there was way more people that technically were around for like two million people playing you know Street Fighter technically buying all the copies of Street Fighter Cross Tekken, um, which is about what it ended up selling. 
Yeah, and that was like their, that was, uh, as far as I remember, that was their projection for like the launch period. Yeah. Like they wanted to sell 2 million copies within three months of it launching. And it, like after three months, they had sold 1.4. Yeah. Um, and it was like a combination of factors, obviously. And like the DLC was a big was So a there's big the big one. one. Let's get but let's talk what, about that. What, what, what it, the what the DLC? <laughs> this is this is the thing. This is this is the beginning of the the Capcom Dark Age, where okay. where like not just this game, games like Asura's Wrath and like several other Capcom uh, titles have like some mm. absolutely like terrible business practices around them that involve like you get the buy the DLC ending or all the characters that are going to be available in like six months are technically on the disc and playable and hackers are playing them online. <laughs> like what yeah, the that hell? Was the thing. That was the thing. <laughs> uh, Justin, did you ever, did you crack your Xbox 360 copy and play with the characters early? <laughs> no, no, I actually never did. I actually bought the DLCs for, for like most of the, the games. I know like in modern times, like now uh, you can get, Get like a hacked ps3 and xbox 360 for like mars capcom 2 online for example that's mm -hmm. why people are playing with like different skins or different music they were able to hack their versions even with cross tekken now like cross tekken there's like a little niche small community that plays now yeah uh but you have to like kind of use a community patch to play online Right, so that's like the yeah, so that, and and also you can't even buy the DLC character, or I think you can still buy DLC characters, but if you want to bypass that, there's like a code where you could just get all the DLC characters with without buying. Because I I looked on Steam and I was like, you know what, I never bought the Steam version, and I was like, oh, there's a reason why. There's like a, this big huge sticker on the Steam page that say because of games for Windows Live, uh, we have decided to uh, cancel the ability to purchase this game on Steam yeah. until we have figured this out, and that. That was like seven years ago that they wrote this yeah, update. It was, it was, Capcom was yeah. big into that Games for Windows Live PC ports, yeah. and almost all of those early 2010s games have to deal with it. That's yeah. Like, that's I, I love how they future-proofed it, for sure, to make sure no one can buy it on Steam later on. But, but, uh, but the weird thing is that like, like, like there's been some funny updates on the Steam database for Street Fighter Cross Tekken for some reason. Like there has mm. been weird, like over the past, like, you know, seven, eight years, nothing has been touched. And then suddenly people have been like pulling out like Steam archive information and finding that like, yeah, something's being, something's happening to, to an update of the game, whether or not it's a like, games for windows live, like reason that they have to do stuff. I don't know, but it could be potentially like a re-release or a release of a version that is actually like purchasable slash playable. Because, yeah, funny enough, Street Fighter Cross Tekken was actually the first big budget Capcom fighting game, like actual release from the company and not like a HD remix or a Third Strike Online edition that had rollback netcode. And it wasn't and it's it's it was it launched in a rough ass state. I don't know if you guys were there for like the first week rollback of Street Fighter Cross Tekken. All the audio desynced from the game constantly. So mm -hmm. I was there. as soon as there's an audio desync. There would be no audio anymore and, and there would just be music in the background and that was it so you would lose all sound effects and it was chunky as hell depending on which version you had to me the xbox 360 version ran really good but well yeah it was their first attempt yeah, the at 360 doing that. one yeah the 361 was really good and even one, once they fixed like the whole issues of the online i would play against people from like brazil and the connection would be great so i thought capcom did a very great job with cross tech and online it's just like it just came out bad at first it can it, yeah it could run well i remember playing most of my online experience being okay and i remember a lot of it being not okay where it would echo sort yeah. of similar issues of like street fighter 5's rollback netcode where it's like oh yeah sometimes this is good good for me and you don't know what the <laughs> hell's going on their other end and it would just be stuttery trash and you're just like dude what like, there's clearly something wrong here uh, in 2013, they had that big patch, that like quality of life patch that adjusted life bars and balancing. Like at that point, like I'll, I'll be honest, like I stopped playing well before that patch ever came out. But I'm assuming you guys both checked out and put it through its paces at the time. Like how much better was it like mechanically or just overall? It, insanely better. <laughs> like, really? yes, 100 times 100 better. 100 times better. Like, and the wow. actual, the, there's. It's, it's hard to even compare because a lot of people think back on Street Fighter Cross Tekken and you're thinking of the 2013 version. Because yeah. if you have like a lot of really good things to say about the launch of Street Fighter Cross Tekken, I'm convinced you weren't there to play it. 
It was yeah. it was the launch version of the game was rough, man. And then the good the good thing about the 2013 version is that I it seemed like it was a very good quality of life buff, but it also I guess got everybody back into playing the game as a competitor standpoint because they started holding tournaments. They had the 25th anniversary what tournament 15th. with uh, 15 15 anniversary or, tournament with like the car 25 yeah. Yeah, so they, they they were giving away a Street Fighter Cross Tekken car. They had like tournaments around America. <laughs> who, can who owns that car? Call into the show. Call our infiltration. number. Infiltration. One eight hundred. Infiltration. Yeah, I don't know if he sold it. I know there was a clause saying that you can't sell this uh, car, like in, when you sign up for this tournament or something. There was like something on that regards. But I'm like, bro, it's all decked out with like Street Fighter Cross Tekken logos, it's you know, really crossing cool fates yeah. or whatever. It was really nice. I really wanted to try to win that all car. All Street it was Fighter really Cross cool. Tekken stuff all over that car would make you really popular. Unfor- yeah, yeah, unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> it's like there's a gigantic uh, Pandora mammoth chasing you whenever you times. drive into this car at all times. <laughs> See, it, it, it gives your life some added tension. Um, yeah. Aside from that 2013 patch, do either of you guys feel that like, because I certainly feel like they could have given it another go, like, you know, made made a super uh, Street Fighter cross Tekken with a few more characters. Well, or do you it, think it, it was it like, essentially it was, was too dead? Like they, yeah. they completely like, for example, like th- there were some pretty insane mechanical changes on top of all the characters that were added. So eventually by the, by the time this point happens, right? Uh, the cat's out of the bag. Everyone hates Capcom. They're hiding <laughs> potentially like every single <laughs> DLC character that nobody even knew about yet. Right? Like, so there's like a huge amount of characters, like half the roster, it felt like that were just locked on the disc and ready to go and were practically done. Uh, so everyone's super pissed. Like, what the hell is your problem? You just released Ultimate Marvel 3 a few months after the previous one, and you're charging full price with, like, no upgrade, yeah, and now right. this? People were mad. Yeah. Because so, the patch was free. Yeah, was, the patch, was, yeah, and, and the, the, the patch was okay. essentially Goodwill, because I, I think his mm. name was Amano. Um, he ended up being the lead producer of Street Fighter 4 uh, a bit later, like around Ultra. He came into the project and sort of like rehelmed it to bring the game back into a state that hopefully might be like somewhat appetizing to check out. So yeah, a lot of stuff was free. There was some, like some costume stuff that was free. There was uh, the big update patch in 2013 was free. And this update patch was crazy. Like I remember them adding because people couldn't do damage in the game. Timeouts were just timeouts, all over. Yeah. The Street Fighter Cross timeout is still a meme to this day. <laughs> Because yeah. it was all over the place, especially competitively. And there was just no way to like get damage and sustain damage and to keep characters from recovering that damn life bar. So they added several things that were really smart. They made throws remove red life, which was good. Um, they made certain team-up moves also remove red life. So if you if you committed the meter and you had the meter to use instead of just like sitting on it and becoming like, you know, a defensive god with EXDPs all the time and stuff you could cash out a ton of damage. And I'm like, oh, this is this is way better. Like, this is a significantly... Pandora was not fixed, by the way. Pandora, like, it's, they tried it, to well, make it Never better, used. But How it still How can you sucks. fix a perfect system? Like, it, it was it, flawless. That, the only good thing about Pandora was that it had the really cool, like, close-up with the purple and then the, 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 and the person died and everything. That looked cool, and that was it. Yeah. Other than that, it's 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 a failed mechanic. It's really neat to see, like, Jin Kazama essentially sacrificing his teammate Kami and going, Eat shit! <laughs> that he just takes <laughs> all of her life force. Can you fix Pandora? Can you take the core of that mechanic, and w- what would you do if you had to have a mechanic like it? I- just don't have a timer. Yeah, the timer I, killed I, it. Yeah, just yeah. Literally, you have like eight seconds to like find a way to make a comeback, and if you don't, you just instantly die. Like I just think if you didn't have the timer and just let the character rock in that situation, um, I feel like there's like another game that did that, but I just can't think of it in my head. And comboing into it was tough, right? I remember yeah. comboing into it was tough, right? Difficult, right, Justin? You have to do like a wall bounce move, and yeah. not every character had a wall bounce yeah, move. It was into very Pandora, limited, right? So it it was pretty hard to make Pandora pretty useful, but I think the number one is number one thing is making sure that you just don't die in eight seconds. Just keep it like 
pretty much this is this is your your new power up at this at yeah. this point. Yeah, but it's like a game that's already filled with power ups because of gems. Yes. So maybe they were like, well, there has to be a disadvantage to using this. Assu- well, okay, there already is a disadvantage that you just you just sacrificed your tag partner. I mean, yeah. look at look at X Factor. X Factor Marvel Three was yeah. a huge success for like everybody. Everybody loved it no. and everybody hated Stop. it. Shut up, I mean, Justin. Look, what are you talking listen, about? <laughs> if you're activating X Factor, you're gonna love it. If you're the one that's not activating X Factor. You have to deal oh, with it. You're gonna hate it. It's a love and hate saying? relationship, right? <laughs> Pandora is like everybody hates it, no matter if you activate it or not activate it, right? Well, because it's like it's a comeback mechanic done in like the worst way. It's it's very like heavy handed, like an X Factor, right? It's essentially the same thing. It's a heavy handed like I have this big thing. Here we go, X out my character. I'm gonna be crazy now. But then like the reward is stupid. The reward is like yeah. not actually good. And it's in a game that's like X Factor kind of kind of makes sense, right? And it doesn't really make sense because some characters just are so good at it than others that one character can just wipe out a whole team. But X Factor kind of makes sense in some situations because it's a 3v3 game. So I even think the developers had like, why does X Factor make sense and isn't insanely overpowered? They're like, well, I mean, if you're down three characters and it's your last character and you're you get X Factor on one character, then that gives you an opportunity to at least take out one or two, you know. And if the other person yeah. goes down to one final character, now they get X Factor and they can just whoop your asses. And this we'll be having a great time. <laughs> like, I love Ultimate Marvel Three, but X Factor is so like this is the most aggressive fighting game mechanic like ever made. <laughs> Um, I, dude, I, I, I think that's why Pandora everybody loved worse. it. That's why everybody loved it. Everybody played Marvel <laughs> Three because they felt like they can make a comeback now, right? But, I think that was like the initial sure, thing. I mean, was I, like, you know what? I get but, what but you're then, saying. But, I get what you're saying. But then that's more that's more of a thing to appeal to casual people. If you have on the back yeah. of the box, you can sacrifice your partner to get this massive buff, and you look so cool. I mean, like most comeback mechanics are to make like you know uh, new players go well I, I have a chance I can do this thing and I get what Max is saying but Pandora is just that was fail like, what do Watch. I have to do <laughs> oh. yeah, there, it comes with like stereo instructions and shit you're like okay so now there's a timer okay but at the same time like it reminds me of if you were to read all of Cross Tekken's uh, mechanics and all of its like combat options it would be like Max playing Street Fighter EX3 for the first time and discovering in it his, in his video and just having a big echo every time he reads out like Cross Assault yeah. Meteor <laughs> Strike I I forget most of the mechanics in Well, the let's game. just even talk about the tag stuff because there was like the ABC yeah. into one, two, three tag, right? Which yeah. was like yep. the, the basic way of the thing that everybody was doing at the start. But then they also had a unique thing where you could manually tag a character in and like do a move. So you'd have like Kazuya would come in and do this gut check overhead thing. Uh, which would later get nerfed, right? But you can tag halfway through that. So the character would like Bing, and they'd be running in, and Kazuya's doing this shit, and Ken's jumping yep. you over. I'm like, this is sick. Like, this this kind of stuff is really cool. They eventually, like, a, a lot of the super broken stuff that happened as a result of that uh, got toned down and fixed in the 2013 version. But, so it feels like a bit a bit better in general. Um, but a lot of, like, the tag stuff I thought was really, was really good. Here's my, here's my number one biggest gripe about the gameplay of Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Um, I've played the game recently, right? Like a couple of times with friends in in a room over the past few years. So it's not even talking about online. Mm-hmm. That game feels weird. Like it would just take, like stiff. Like like just the feel of like how characters move it feels weirdly weighted and and heavy. Like mm. everything about the game just feels like off in comparison to Street Fighter Four, which is what it's directly pulling from. Like the same engine, same sort of characters, same style. And when you move with characters in cross tech and everyone feels like they mostly have like weighted feet. It's a very weird feeling game, especially considering all the other Capcom fighting games are super snappy and they just go, you know, uh, something about yeah, it is usually yeah. off to me. I, I get what you mean. I always assume that's because it was built off four and they were like, well, we can't have it feel exactly like four. So they might've just made some minor like adjustments to speed and like weight and stuff. And it just, it just permeates the entire game. And I remember it feeling good when it came out. I remember getting used to it. And you're like, oh, okay, this is fine. But when, yeah. you, when you have, like, the p- comparison, like, Street Fighter Four still feels like a really good fighting game to this day. Yeah. I don't really feel that with Street Fighter Cross Tekken. I think the game is super feature-rich, and it's actually a, a pretty great fighting game once you sink your teeth into it. But it has a weird first impression 
when you start playing it that feels a little off yeah i remember that being it, the the consensus in our office like when we were playing it people were like this feels a little weird and i was like yeah maybe um yeah it, it does have like that weighted down like kind of making characters heavy type of feel especially when you're like kind of like playing this neutral and footsies thing but i think once you start doing the combos though oh, it becomes it becomes very nice right because i guess you're the one doing like this combo and everything starts to move fluid but yeah when you're walking back and forth or you're pressing one button at a time it definitely has like that kind of like goku and piccolo wearing weighted clothing type of feel to it for sure yeah and like i was i was gonna say earlier but uh max kind of said something that made me go oh yeah you're right is is could you have done like a super version of this with more characters and stuff but at that point yeah the goodwill was already like so sapped away from the dlc and them marketing wise and like just where it fits in in their sales schedule having to move that dlc up from something like October or September when it was supposed to because it was going to be time to be out when the Vita version came out like yeah. Capcom had to wait for the Vita version to be out to then release that DLC and then they said fuck it and just moved it up to like July yeah. or June or something when the game yeah, it was, was out it was like March. only five months later that the DLC started showing up yeah and okay and but the real question is so I have never uh, played this character but have you guys tried out the Mega Man character yeah. in that game. I have not because I, it, it, I, it, I it, don't own the PS3 awful. Version. He's awful. He's just a joke. <laughs> he's a, yeah, he's a, he, so he's worse than Dan. His normals are yeah. His norm. His, he is the Dan of the game. His normals are like terrible, and his specials are hilariously like weak and kind of lame. Oh, and the uh, and the other one was Pac Man, right? In like a Moku Pac Man right? and Cole McGrath, and there was oh, also Cole Kuro McGrath. and Turo, <laughs> which were the PlayStation mascots at the time. So the, the weirdly enough, and people were super pissed about this because at the time frame, everybody in the FGC and everyone knew that the Xbox 360 version of Capcom's fighting games ran significantly better. Uh, yes. So Street Fighter Four, Ultimate Marvel Three, everything ran on 360, and then the PlayStation version drops, and the PlayStation gets all these extra characters i think mega man was split between them both mega man and pac-man were on both co both consoles i think eventually. after a little while yeah eventually it took it took some yeah. time but cole mcgrath kuro turo and oh, there was one one we just mentioned i think <laughs> uh there, there were several playstation characters that were not on uh obviously oh, evil play, like, evil Xbox cole room. evil cole was it there evil cole in the game it sounds I familiar. I'm like, I, I feel I know a, there's maybe, a maybe a, had a, a costume. Cola. It was a costume. Maybe might have been a costume. Oh, it's you might have dreamed that. I might have dreamed that. I dream up a <laughs> lot of fucked up shit. So, um, <laughs> yeah, but but okay. So when Nether Realm goes, hey, let's have Kratos. Let's have one character in in our game. Well. All tourneys will ban that character. Yeah. So here's Capcom swinging a big dick around, going, "Let's have like six yeah. characters that are exclusive to one." What were they thinking? This game did not give two shits about like tournament <laughs> standards. <laughs> no, yeah. it didn't care. Like, and I remember everyone had to like adopt weird rules for gems and stuff like that. It had to be like base gem sets, you know. And some places did no gems, and uh dude, it was there was zero consideration from like the marketing effort of the when the game was in development of like how are we going to sell this game of what tournament structure was going to be like they didn't care so their, their way their way to fix that was uh when 2013 patch came out they just gave you a set of five base gems yeah. that you use the as neutral tournament packs. standard right the neutral packs that's like okay these are the ones that you can really use for tournament standards so you don't have to have like those auto guards or tech throw ones online though it is a jungle whatever you fight online is whatever you fight online auto, <laughs> I, I remember what, what, what were the worst ones justin do you remember i remember auto throw tech being one of the most Oh my god. Auto throw. I think it was auto throw, no chip damage. Oh, one no guard for you. Damage. Yeah. One one, one would just yeah. block for you. Yeah, auto ups. guard. Yeah. One was auto guard. Kind of like Tekken how like in old Tekken games you could just like let the let the stick go in neutral and then they just auto auto block for you. So they had that. So I think like when you combine those three, they were like so obnoxious cuz you're like, "Bro, how am I supposed to hit you?" <laughs> Well, it's, it's, sir, it's because I paid uh, two ninety nine <laughs> for a little gem in, in a DLC menu. Wasn't there like specific things you had to do for certain gems to activate? Like you had to hit oh, yeah. like three dragon punches. No, you yeah you couldn't you couldn't just do them. 
right? There was yeah. no like, yo, I'm gonna press these buttons to activate my gems. No, there was like a requirement. You had to like land three chain combos, or yep. land like several special moves, or block or certain get, or attacks, get hit, or get hit, or get yep. hit. Yeah, because because in my head I was confusing it with Hayugi's or whatever in in uh, fighting the X Lair. Very similar, Sorry. right? Oh yes, they are, but they're not nearly as. Like, what is the difference there on a fundamental level? Because like, you, you didn't have to pay for them. It, well, remember when you didn't have to pay for them? And fighting EX layers, I, I don't know. I found, like, the, the Juggernaut gem, or whatever the hell it was, uh, yeah, in uh, Gogi. In, Gogi! In, in EX Gogi. layer was, was super crappy. Like, it almost, like, completely interrupted the game. I wouldn't say that the outside of some of the really aggressive gems, the neutral gems that they added in 2013 didn't interrupt the game. You'd either do like 10% more damage or gain like 15% more meter or get a little bit faster speed. Like you would just let it happen. I, and most of the time people would not prioritize the activation of my blue shit. <laughs> uh, it would it would just sort of be there in in EX layer. That stuff was so heavy handed that they like eventually and it, it eventually was the reasons like, I like, kind of stopped playing the game a lot. I'm like this game's really fun, but this like this gogi shit, man, it needs to go. And they it's eventually a lot. changed it's a the lot. game where it's like, yeah, gogi less version of EX Layer. And to me, that's like way better. Uh, you know, I really think Arika should have had you make a back of the box quote for the game that says, this game is really fun, but this gogi shit needs to go. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, he, he, no, I mean, Max is right. They have like the juggernaut one where like, no, the, the one that pissed me off the most recently when I played a few, few months back was called Heads or Tails. So if you're up around, it, the heads and tails activate, and then all of a sudden, uh, if it's heads, like the coin, the game will flip a coin, literally. If it's heads, um, that character you're fighting has infinite super armor until the round is over. If it's tails, then it's regular. And I'm like, bro, and then what you is have to this? Stop playing the game, right? Yeah, <laughs> you're fighting. You're fighting. You're fighting. You're fighting. Go War Machine and fighting Eggs Lair at this point. Yeah. Like, and th is that like Two Face from Batman mode? Like every time the coin <laughs> flips, you get like it's, this. I don't know. Buff. I don't know whose ideas was to just give these characters an absolute metric ton of armor all of a sudden that lasts forever. But it's not a good idea. And in, in the same way that like a lot of the gems, the ones that people did not like were the fact that they cost money. And they were heavy handed. They essentially like ruined the competitive integrity of the game uh, outside of like we're not, we're not, I'm talking about I'm not talking about the the core gems, right? The the, the, the sort of base gems that were in 2013. No, I, I wish there was a list that we could see of how much gems there were. And I get to see it every single time I fire up my Xbox 360 or something. And I go to like DLC for the game, which is still functional. And yeah, I just start nice. scrolling, scrolling. Like it's like an Excel sheet of so many gems and shit that yeah. were in the, I'm like, Jesus Christ, man, this thing is crazy. So you know, I pay to win, man. They had <laughs> to do the something. Future. They had to like find a way to monetize because they spent too much money on those CG cutscenes. It's, it's, and so many characters in general, like like even using all the Street Fighter Four models, they still had to make a shitload of new models, especially for like. Okay, I'll give the game always a pass because let's just say Ultra. This game wouldn't really exist. Uh, I mean, sorry, Ultra Street Fighter Four wouldn't really exist if there these models for Street Fighter characters, new ones, hadn't been in cross Tekken. So yeah. Rolento, Hugo, and Poison. Uh, wait, there's Elena. one of El El Elena. Thank you. Um, yeah. And I was just like, me as a huge Final Fight mark, I'm like, oh, God. I'm so happy, especially with Poison. And it, but it, funny enough, it like for a, a lot of impressions, and at least for me, people that were aware that Street Fighter Cross Tekken existed, by the time Ultra SF4 came out, it was just a, a huge asset dump of like, okay, so listen. Street Fighter Cross Tekken didn't make any enough money, so we have to make money off this somehow. Let's just yeah. take all the things that weren't in, that we could actually put in, because we haven't put Tekken characters in the game. Let's take all the Street Fighter characters that were new character models and stuff, and we're just going to cram them into an Ultra Street Fighter 4, and then we'll put in DiCapre, and plus DiCapre, right? So right. it's like Ultra Street Fighter 4 Cross Tekken plus DiCapre and Alpha, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Gold. Man. Gold. Uh, I mean, the, the characters came out pretty well in Ultra Street Fighter 4, you know, even though Elena was Elena. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, Hugo and Poison were such good characters mm -hmm. that they made. And like, e even even animation wise, does it is it on the same level as Third Strike? No, but the, the amount of care on Hugo's model to, to oh, for sure. Hugo, replicate yeah. every single little, like all of his little jiggle jaggles with his hair and he's just <laughs> yeah. moving and stuff. Cause I, I played the game, uh, 
about like, I don't know, six months ago, I, I just did a random uh, video of just me playing it. And I just wanted them as, as my team because they have all this synergy and stuff. But I was super glad that they were even going back and they have like all those new stages and like a Final Fight centric stage. So I'm always in the back of my head, I do have a soft spot for the game. Uh, I was going to ask though, like we were discussed how like, the gems kind of and and other smaller factors kind of killed the game's chances at FGC and tournament wise, especially with a bunch of other Capcom fighting games still being played. But like, I had this conversation with someone that's like, well, do you really think casually a person that will play Street Fighter also plays Tekken? And I'm pro- and I was thinking probably that there, there's some overlap for sure, but. If you're into fighting games in general, you probably play all of them. You probably respect uh, most of them. And some people, like, if someone just, I want to throw fireballs, they probably don't play Tekken that often. Or the last time they played Tekken was Tekken 3. And they're just like, where's Gone? Why is he not in the game? I, and that's the funniest thing is that there's a lot of Tekken 3 influence in the game. Even Yoshimitsu is his Tekken 3 version it's of tr- the yeah, character yeah, yeah. in some yeah. way. Uh, Ogre. Um, yeah, Ogre's in the game for fuck's oh, sake. Oh, such, such a cool character. And he's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. He was actually one of the characters I, I played as well. He's a super fun character. The But I think what you're saying is absolutely right. Like, the game on a fundamental concept was essentially built upon a relationship between devs and all these Japanese devs that essentially meet at bars, drink, and have crazy ideas, right? And that's how a lot of projects get started in Japan, weirdly enough. <laughs> and this is definitely one of those where it's like, this seems cool. This definitely seems interesting, but even I remember being younger, right, around this time frame and hearing about Street Fighter Cross Tekken very early on from that initial teaser and being sort of excited, but also like not really being like, ah, like, let's go like this. I, I feel like they were sort of hoping that this would be a huge bridging of the gap. Uh, between two franchises that could finally put them together, but not the two franchises I think that people wanted. Because if there's one other thing that I, I think people probably wanted Street Fighter to fight against, right? What franchise could Street Fighter fight against that has been talked about literally since its inception practically in the early 90s? And it's Mortal Kombat. It's Mortal, Mortal Kombat. Kombat. Yeah. Street Fighter versus Mortal Kombat has been like a discussion point for God, like literally 30 years. So... This or the, the game was already built on like a, a, a concept that might have been not super appealing for a lot of people. Yeah, because listen, if if adapting Tekken characters in Street Fighter was hard on a fundamental level, like I don't think it's really possible. I don't think it's possible for those two design philosophies. Uh, also presentation wise because the modern casual Mortal Kombat player is not going to go back to bloodless yeah, exactly. vi- violent yeah, Mortal sure. Kombat n- now that they've raised the stakes and Capcom isn't going to let you have Scorpion rip out uh, Chun-Li's rib cage you know never it's not going to happen <laughs> the closest thing you could get for that is like I don't know if you guys watched this like long time ago but you ever watched those like Flash fan anime. made like flash, flash animations on like new new grounds of like oh, yeah what's it what's a scorpion versus, versus ryu, uh, versus ryu, ryu is the best and then yeah yeah yep. that was and then chungli comes out with a proton cannon and everything <laughs> like that like those videos really made me believe that there was a chance that street fighter versus mk would happen eventually but it, it was it's tough for sure it's definitely tough i think in the 2d like it was still in the 90s if it wasn't going to happen then, then it's never going to happen in the future because like the the violence level to Mortal Kombat has been raised to a thing where you can't go back. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, and uh, MK versus DC. I'll that never forget. I'll never forget the rate the fatal uh, video Max has on that <laughs> where there's just stunned silence as Kano just kind of hits you with his foot and just kind of stands there. And Steve just going, damn, he got bodied. <laughs> oh, shit. Like, it's so. He might need to go to the hospital. <laughs> I, I just don't think it'll it'll ever happen. Like, and you know that at least Ed Boon is like, oh, that'd be so cool. People have been asking for that forever, yeah. but it, it, it just ain't be. gonna happen. Like, yeah, it's, there's just too many know. design differences, and like the, these are these are character rights, character properties, and Ryu is not going to you know, punch the heart out of Johnny Cage, you know, like these are, 
these are things that are just fundamentally different design elements behind these characters and why it's it would sort of difficult for Mortal Kombat to cross over in some ways. But I think it's here's the thing. I think it's completely possible, right? Like Sub-Zero in and Mortal Kombat characters in Injustice 2 work shockingly well. And do they yeah. feel like they're 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 specifically missing like they're crazy Mortal Kombat? Yes, they don't like they and that's a teen that's a teen T for teen game. So I, I I feel like there's there there's a much different barometer of like how do we do this than the MK versus DC efforts of like late midway type stuff where they were just like oh we just got to put out a goddamn game before the before the walls close in. All right, that's true. Because mm. they did up their game with. Um, injustice like level three supers where they are incredibly cinematic and you can call them brutal a lot of them uh the stuff that they do so i scorpion rips it i'm sorry sub-zero and injustice who rips a dude's head off but it's done from a first person perspective he rips the cameraman's head off right okay i'm like this is this is i'm like what's that did you just rip you hear the blood coming out you're like damn this this is awesome that is a lot more creative than the camera yeah. just pulling away from Joker, like yep. shooting you with a magnum, you know, that's true. And, in, and then this is just me and this is sort of deviating, but I, I personally feel when you have to get really creative with this stuff, instead of just having the gore be the thing, right? Just the gore and the blood is what we're aiming for. When you have to get creative with this stuff, I, I, I would think that you could actually pull off a Street Fighter versus Mortal Kombat, but it would take like a lot of, it, it would have, you'd have to stretch some brain muscles in order to 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 make that feel as brutal as Mortal Kombat and as Street Fighter E as Street Fighter, you know? Don't worry, you 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 you'll get that. You'll get that, Max, when you you know when Smash Brothers Ultimate as have Sub Zero in there. You know that's the one, one one franchise left when, that Smash hasn't gotten yet. Right? So don't worry. His, his video game retirement. He's like, I'm back. Yeah, that's the closest. The I think that that's the only way I, I see Sub Zero getting with, in a game with Ryu and Ken. If Sub Zero or Scorpion, whoever made it, in, made it into Smash Ultimate, then I demand. Since Sakurai was so insistent on, on like staying true to the franchise, I demand that whenever Sub Zero punches people, little gray sweat comes <laughs> out. Just, it has to be sweat. authentic to the Super Nintendo. Um, I was gonna I was gonna say right right before this though that. Now that I think about it, Street Fighter VI going for what we all assume is going to be a photorealistic art style. Relatively, maybe yeah. it's maybe it's not out of the realm of of like you know a possibility. But at the same time, I just don't see a developer like um, uh, sorry publisher like Warner Brothers who's now pushing their own multiverse fighting game. Yeah. maybe Ryu could show up in that. That's the only thing I can think of that they would talk yeah. to Capcom since since Ryu is in Fortnite. Max, did you know there's a lot of characters that you like in Fortnite? Yeah, and they all have like AK forty sevens and stuff, and it's real funny. Do you think about <laughs> it every day? The answer lies in the heart of battle. <laughs> <laughs> like, no. No. okay well capcom's cool with this i mean he's on a magic card and he's blasting your ass in Fortnite. he's like no we don't we don't need a hadouken anymore we got rifles ak shotguns you name rocket it rocket launchers I, yeah rocket please, please have the cover of street fighter 6 just ryu with this ak <laughs> yes. like that's ryu with an ak-47 or something like that we take all the bets are off, off. The like, have his change his headband put it in front so it looks like a gi joe type yeah, of thing like rambo <laughs> suddenly you know, like, he's just <laughs> ralph <laughs> <laughs> just ryu walking real slow <laughs> on the spire behind him. fire the background the climax was cross tekken was whatever was the Namco version, do you think, ever got anywhere close to development? I wish. I want to know this. Okay. I want to know this, too. Do you know anything, Max? You know stuff sometimes. I can't <laughs> say. Th you played these conversations it. You are played within it. five years. Max has just confirmed he played a build. <laughs> but I, I, I can't say anything specifically about any of the random conversations I've, I've had with people. Fair enough. Um, but... I would say if if you're looking, talking about the future of Street Fighter Cross Tech, and there, there's been some weird Steam updates, right? The game might mm -hmm. be relaunched on Steam. But if you're thinking in the back of your head, what about Tekken Cross Street Fighter? We saw screenshots. We saw Ryu's face. <laughs> like there was things. Akuma was a got into Tekken somewhere. 7. Yeah. It, yeah, Akuma. Bamco, Bamco said they're like, hey, you know what? Like 
this game is not canceled, it's on hiatus, right? So that was, Jesus, I don't even, I don't even know how many videos I've made on Street Fighter, on Tekken Cross Street Fighter of it, like, being alive, like, it still exists, like, what, every two years? Um, however, I will say, based on everything I've heard, everything that seems to be in the future, that if you wanted a Street Fighter, like, Tekken to take the Street Fighter characters and do their versions of Street Fighter characters and throw them with their, their own Tekken characters, you technically got it. And you got it in Tekken 7 with Akuma. Uh, don't say that. That's only one character. I know. I mean, they had. They obviously added, like, well, they added Geese. They got, like, sure. Noctis. Uh, they got all these guest characters, which are really cool. But if we're, but, if we're talking about the extension of that relationship of, like, okay, yeah. so we, we are essentially exchanging character rights, right? There was, like, an equal exchange. We're going to do our version of the game. You're going to give us the rights, to, like, a, a blanket rights to Tekken characters. And there was a lot of Tekken characters in Street Fighter Cross Tekken. And then we're going to hand over those rights to, 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 to Bamco. And they're going to take their version of our Street Fighter characters, and it's just like, hey, you know what? Whatever you want to pull from the library seems to be okay. That that appears to be what the contractual obligation was between, like, Ono and Harada. That but makes sense, though, yeah. Harada, when Tekken 7 was coming out, and Tekken 7 was literally, like, five years after Street Fighter Cross Tekken was when it launched on console, um, there was still a significant stigma and from what I understand, like, nobody wants to get anywhere close to that Street Fighter Cross Tekken stigma. To the point where it's like, hey, you know what, we, like, maybe Bamco has the option to do it, but will they actually make a full game? I don't think so. I, I think I've always expressed interest in that. I would love to see their takes on Kami and Chun and Ryu and Ken in a Tekken game. I'd love that. I mean, I'd love it too. But I think the extension, the, what, what really came out was just Akuma, and that's all they really used. Like, I think it's the same as the Mega Man stigma. It's like, oh, this, there is like a perceived failure. So no one wants to try again because no, uh, it was kind of just said to me, like when, when a project or a initiative, whatever kind of fails, it, it's very, everyone's very hesitant to be like, well, let's try that again. And it, it takes years. Like it took like seven years for a new Mega Man game yeah. to come out, Mega Man 11. Yeah. Um, so I, I've always heard that that could be a, a reason. And you have to I, go ahead. Yeah, go, uh, I was just going to say, I would have been really happy if when they, Instead of just Akuma, when Street, uh, when um, Tekken Seven had its uh, like first DLC, I would have I would have minded a Street Fighter pack where it was Akuma, Ryu, and Chun Li. Oh yeah. Or or maybe not even Akuma, like somebody else, Ryu and Chun Li. You know, wh that's what whatever. I want for KOF fifteen, man. <laughs> yeah, a team. I like oh, just, fifteen. Just Brawlhalla? a team. That'd be so sick. <laughs> yeah. But just a team and they could just have a special logo just for that. It's like, here, here's That's what it, it came down to. Because Akuma, uh, uh uh Justin was right. Akuma's uh, just one character. Yeah, well, he, he, it's and, all the sun you have to think potential. of like you think of the scalability of Akuma. Akuma wasn't just like, hey, we tossed Geese into the game. Geese is now a part of Tekken. No, no, no. He was Akuma part of the story. was the story. Yeah. Like, sure. he was no, yeah, that, rooted that's big. into the story mode and was a huge part of the marketing of that made Tekken 7 actually as big as it did. In fact, I think Bamco, uh, by being a bit more haphazard with their usage of the, the Street Fighter license and, and all those Capcom characters, came out way ahead, obviously, because everything that was that crazy cinematic battle between Heihachi and Akuma that started and kicked off the, the marketing for Tekken 7 was fucking awesome. I was like, it damn, was you get super to play hype. this shit? This is so sick. And that was that was it was it was amazing because it was Heihachi versus fucking Akuma. And it was literally like caked into the whole story. Like they won. They did it. They they did the they did by by being more limited with their usage of everything instead of just being like right like every, Akuma goes like it's not over and then he kicks down the door and Chun Li and Cammy and Hugo and everyone's just running out of the <laughs> like, like kicking them like they're jacks and shit like get the fuck out of here like they could have gone crazy like that but they didn't like they they limited it and just made it about this one little story. I mean, it, it was a really good story too. Eh. You didn't like it? I really like the fact that, like, you know, because he he owed like a debt to uh, what was that? What was that character? The 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 one, the lady. Uh, the oh, the tiger. Uh, wife. He had his wife. Yeah. The tiger. Yeah. So she's he, you such know, an he, awesome he, character. Yeah. Right. And uh, he he and uh, he owed a debt to her, and then he's like, all right, I'm gonna like solve the debt, and then come back here in this game, and then do what I need to do against Hayachi and like other characters. I thought that was like. 
pretty cool that they added him him into the story. That that part is cool. It's like almost the rest of the entire story mode where you're that weird reporter and you're looking at over your diaries or your memoirs. Yeah. That yeah. shit was like grating. That was so annoying. But the actual core little bits of the cutscenes you got. Lots of really hype fights. It, lots of really hype fights, but like everything else, the presentational wise around because they, I, I don't think this was uh, done to mislead people, but all those trailers that showed Akuma fighting Heihachi had all the slick camera angles that went in from the the choreographed fighting into the actual match. That is what I thought the story mode was going to be. And it was be. pretty much just that. And it was just yeah. that moment. Yeah. Exactly. So, I, I mean, I was always kind of like, it's never coming out. But the fact that they never outright said it's it's canceled it's it's never coming out They're like but it was something like what six months ago last year sometime where harada just said yeah it's dead am yeah. i am i great like that was the like a year or two years ago where they basically he was a bit more like this. focused and he finally was like letting people know or it was michael murray or somebody that was like this project's probably not going anywhere and no. Uh, which is, I think, smart, and it, that's why I keep telling people, like, if you guys wanted Street Fighter or Tekken Cross Street Fighter, you technically got it with Akuma. So, and it, and it, was it, did they do a good job? I think so, right? Mm. Akuma ended up being arguably one of the most, like, busted characters in the game, technically, but he has, like, an executional barrier around him, you know, that allows him to be so crazy and busted. I loved playing Akuma when he came out, man, like... A lot of that stuff and customizing him to look like Oni and all this cool shit. Like, this is great. Like, this is just so much, so much fun. And if there's one thing I can also give Street Fighter Cross Tekken a little bit of credit for, they finally revitalized a couple of the things that I really enjoyed about older Capcom fighting games. They had, like, color edit mode. A lot of people sure. abused it. But they, they brought back a lot of those cool things that would not really be present in a lot of non-2D uh, fighting games, right? And... There, there's there's a lot of redeemable aspects at least of the game yeah like the the my, my thought about it in general when, when you were saying about how there's weird stuff going on with the steam version is that do you, do you think there's a chance they might actually be like here's a remastered version for current consoles let's try no. this again no, oh, no i don't okay. think so no no it's we're just no way we're moving <laughs> no, okay no way no way <laughs> no way <laughs> no, absolutely definitive. Not. no no there, there would be a version that like there might be like a blanket capcom thing for a lot of their games for windows live right there might be like adjustments made to those where they remove the gfwl functionality Mm -hmm. to make them Please actually do. playable online or something because you can't even play the steam version online yeah that like you have to use kind of like a community patch but then capcom like pretty much took that away that people actually can't play online so i think the only way they could play is like parsec, parsec. so so th if they were able to just to remove that barrier of like games for window live then you know the, the community will always survive somehow even if it's like a smaller community they it will be like that niche circle that you join like a discord if you want to play street fighter cross tekken because ultimately 2013 version is 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 a pretty darn good game but it's just it, it's it's a significantly better game yeah because when i was making a uh what happened video on cross tekken i i think i announced uh, i think i was contacted after the video was out from people that are in the that small niche community for the 2013 version like hey like thanks for you know not having one of those videos that shits on the game and says it's really bad i was sure. like no this is more about the development of it but I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it because it's like yeah that's still there and like the modding community for that game is also crazy with the amount of costumes and stuff like i guess that yep. started on street fighter 4 for pc same engine yeah but, but that's where i saw a lot of crazy costumes like blanca was predator or, or yeah. whatever. And I was like, that, well, blank is cool. That's awesome. I've never seen that before. And just the amount of costumes that were already there, like the crazy pirate costumes everyone had, like they went real ham on costumes for that game, even more so than Street Fighter 4 before, like in its earlier versions. I think there was two special costumes per character, like very early on, like in the first year before they went on the, the crazy costume grind in Street Fighter 4, which would last like almost one pack a year type stuff because they had like the horror costumes and the animal costumes yeah. and all that weird shit. That was a, that's what I'm thinking of actually. It was, I was confusing with Ultra Street Fighter 4 because I was buying a pack. What, what's every costume that Poison has? Let me buy that pack or, or whatever <laughs> I was going through it. <laughs> um, if, if the game, if there was any overall stuff 
you would ever want to see changed or were there characters missing you still any of you wanted because i have like one or two of like oh it would have been cool if they're in but is there any like missing stuff you would have loved to have seen in like the base version of the 2013 update i think they still would 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 need to fix the time issue because they're still gonna they're still gonna be timeouts even though they reduced the timeout stuff so i would say for a quality of life but for like gameplay i think making the timer maybe slower or upping the damage uh to make it like like i would say move a little bit faster for people that don't know how to do combos Mm -hmm. um and then probably you know obviously the more characters the better i will who doesn't want more characters i know you had like um tekken characters which is great but even that having like capcom characters that's not street fighter related yeah. but from different franchises would be pretty cool i know they had like final fight but just adding kind of like from more different series would be uh, obviously more more enjoyable for sure i think the game has one of my favorite modes in a capcom fighting game that they've had in a long time they essentially emulated cross fever from marvel one on dreamcast where oh, yeah. you could have all four characters on screen at one time piloted by four people um and the i think it was in both versions of the game but just the playstation 3 actually had it online so if you wanted to like make a room and you wanted to do a a, it was called scramble battle uh you can only do it on the ps3 version and like i was saying earlier it barely worked like that system is choking (laughs) to to make that make that thing actually function but i love those modes i think they're just stupid and fun like I, i i i really agree with the the concept that like there should just be stupid fun modes like dramatic battle and stuff things that aren't competitive that are just enjoyable with friends and stuff and yeah whenever we play scramble battle it's a ton of fun is it broken and busted and will i ever take it seriously no but it's a reason to it's actually the reason i fire up the game usually right it's like after all these years i want to play some crazy scramble battle or something because there's no other game that has like a mode that's very few like Like, very very few where you can actually pilot like all the characters at once on screen street with, fighter with, with ex3 like everyone taking a character <laughs> so was it was was other one guilty gear asuka has that too yeah sort of yeah yeah but that game that, 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 that that's the platform one right no, it, yeah it's like a the smash butter ones oh. where you could like four have four characters yeah, yeah the, but that's the like best that game has like a gear. turnaround button and things no, like that the, like it, it yeah, yeah, it has a so terribly <laughs> yeah, the, the, the two the, the, the two greatest guilty gears of course is asuka it's dust strikers and of course there's guilty gear 2 that's the best overture one. yeah overture overture yeah, no, it's a strong <laughs> fighting game very strong mechanics very bold direction um in terms of cross tech in i still would have loved to have seen like feng added in yeah. the roster on the on the tech mm. side and unknown would have been cool like unknown just With, like visually the wolf spirit wolf wolf stand yeah and as much as i love hugo because there is that that final fight bend it would that would have been the opportunity to get hagar in there finally yeah it, finally it, like just to, to he was to in get the him background in there. he was in the background <laughs> he was in the background <laughs> Just rock rock was in the background of ultimate <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I would actually echo that sentiment right i'm kind of done with like the Street Fighter specific crossovers, because even yeah. Capcom versus SNK, we've mentioned this before, is Capcom versus SNK, but the majority of the Capcom roster, like except like a couple characters, is all Street Fighters. So I I think it would have been way better if it was like Capcom versus Namco, right? Just generalize it a bit more. No, yeah. that, that would. I think that would have had probably even more casual appeal because oh, yeah. then you then you're getting a bunch of people saying hey look uh this character from a jrpg lloyd from tales of oh, symphonia yeah. is here that would be so good there's strider yeah that, well because cross tech and kind of did it they're like hey here's here's absolute shitty mega man versus and, and pac-man, pac-man in a mokujin yeah. costume <laughs> But like just having regular small Mega Man versus yeah. Pac Man would have been a nice height difference, whatever. Absolutely, like and thing. like make make a two D fighting game out of it with two V twos. Like this seems awesome. Like this seems like a this seems like that makes a lot more sense than Street Fighter Cross Tekken. You know, which is two very subset communities in these bigger groups of companies that have a lot of IPs. So, so what you're saying is this could have been the Capcom versus Sammy that we never got. <laughs> Yeah, I remember hearing about this in the early two thousands. That that was that was fake, right? That was that was never a real thing. From what I understand, that it was it was like a thing that was effort was put into it, 
And it, it didn't uh, eventually start, but that was like a, one of those things where Capcom was trying to like look out to other partners to make big fighting game franchises, and Sammy was one of them. From what I remember. Yeah. They're like, who are these losers? Oh, they made some fists in the North Star fighting game. Eh, who cares? Nobody cares about the about this developer. <laughs> They'll you, never you know what the crazy us. part. <laughs> that would the, the crazy part well. about that. Yeah, the crazy part of that fist of the North Star is that like I think the mobile game actually has Street Fighter collaboration in it too Shut so up. you could have you could play like ryu chung lee and stuff like that in that collab probably not now but it was like during a limited time but yeah that collab definitely exists in modern time okay. well the, the good news is that matthew and justin you guys can actually experience street fighter and tekken characters in the same game together in the king of fighters all-star that's true <laughs> they, are, they are together <laughs> And they are fighting again and with each other in a variety of different ways and in a, in a, a potentially not the game that you're looking for, but they're there. And you and it's also joined by John Cena. <laughs> John Cena and <laughs> The Rock. God, Geese versus The Undertaker is the match we all want, right? Like, it's going to be weird if King of Fighters All-Star goes down as the greatest crossover game in video game history. For fighting games, it might be actually when you really think about it. Because yeah, because Guilty Gear characters are also in the That's game. That's true. And then some other, it. yeah, and then some other like game called like Seven Nights collab was also in the game too. So yeah, I just, mean they're just gonna keep getting more collabs. Just turn it into a fighting game. Just turn it. It doesn't need to be triple A. It doesn't need to. Be, it just make it like a meager budget fighting no, game. The characters mobile, don't need to have like I don't need to see their action parts. game. Just turn. I'm it waiting into a for game, Mario man. Luigi just, in there too. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Throw in Mario and Luigi and call it a day. Mario, Luigi, and Peach. That's the new KOF team. <laughs> you want you want the team Shoto, Mario, Luigi, and Wario? I mean, you got it right there. Get Bowser in there. Now's the time. <laughs> memes. Ooh, that's will, a good one. Memes will transcend games. <laughs> I think Capcom does a great job when they're adding like collaboration characters. Oh, I've never been able to extend this way. <laughs> oh god, I gotta get the helmet on. Oh god, oh god. Wait a minute, our guy's a bad guy the whole time. I just think it's crazy that I'm better at video games now than when I was like 16. That is how you fix all the problems with all these games. I feel like toy distribution is so different than it used to be. They re-sculpted over the chest, they gave him a flak jacket over it. I laugh when I see Among Us, but I'm not having fun inside. I'm just, it's a reflex. <laughs> no, you took my <laughs> Jones! <laughs>